Mr. THC, Lizzie Betty. <laughs> back to the Lizzie Bitty channel. We have a special guest today. Look who we have. What is your name? I have a companion, THC. Wow. Let's crack it up. And where do you hail from originally? East Side, Long Beach, California. What's oh. cracking back in everybody? What's, what's going on? Where my East Side is at from Long Beach? As you can see, he's very <laughs> full of himself in Long Beach. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love some Long Beach. Like, Africa, so, yeah. uh, we see. Do you have that same love for the Gambia? Oh, of course. Gambia is, is my second home. Well, I'm just asking because I haven't seen the Gambia shirt and were you saying the Gambia on it like that, like you're doing with the long. So I'm just, I, I think you're a bit impartial. Yeah, I'm going to get my. Uh, my tailor makes some of the... Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. So those of, those of you who don't know, tell us about your two businesses that you have here, sir. I have a tourism business in the Gambia. Uh, we go all around uh, the Gambia. We go to uh, Senegal as well. We go to the uh, uh, Lion Walk. We go to the car, see the monuments. And also, we go to uh, Kuta Kente, Roos Island over in Jafar. We go to the Monkey Park, all these different places. And uh, the South Gambian tour, we, we, we go everywhere. So, yeah, my second business, I have a fashion and tailoring uh, uh, business. We specialize in uh, daishikis, African mm -hmm. clothes for men and women. And so, you know, that's what we do. Uh, it's, 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 it's fun, it's interesting, and it's always a never a dull moment, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> okay, and so for those of you who have never gone to his channel, he does these fashion shows, and now he also does men's wear clothing. Because at first you were just showcasing your women's fashions, yeah. and then when you did men's fashions, I say, oh, look at him trying to level up over here. I was even and, le and look, and leveling up quickly. <laughs> so go over here, and I will have his channel linked down below, and you can go over there and check out and see um, about his fashions. Now, let me ask you this with your fashions. Yes. Will you, if a person were to send you their measurements, would you ship abroad? T tell us about that. Yeah, we, we can ship abroad. Send the measurements. We're gonna have a template, actually, okay. so you can fill out, fill it, fill it, fill in the, your measurements. Okay. And then uh, we get the material, and then we'll, we'll make sure that you have it's a correct material that you like. Send us a picture of what you want, and my tailors can just make it. We we'll ship it, but the cost of shipping is kind of high. So, of course. you know, uh, we try to ship it. If you want it right away, I mean, it's gonna cost a little more money, but you know, take your time with it, and uh, you know. Uh, we give you a good deal, but the shipping is uh, kind of high. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we can ship it to you. Okay, yeah. and that's even some of the fashions that like you showcase on your channel oh, as yeah. well. If people, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So once I link the channel, you can go over and, and check it out. And if it's something that you like, cause honey, and, and the, his, his employees, they have some some nice styles. Just so you, just so you know, okay. Yeah, got, yeah. yeah they got, got some, some nice stuff. stuff yeah, yeah, some nice stuff. Some nice stuff. Thank All right, we're gonna jump right into it here. Uh -oh. Um, just be so. There's 54 nations on this yeah. continent. Why the Gambia? Ooh, man, you know, uh, the Gambia is like, well, I was back in the day when I was young, young troop in the military, you know, um, I actually read the book Roots by Adam Taylor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kuta Kente, and I, I uh, read uh, that book, it kind of inspired me, okay. and uh, first time I ever heard the word Tubab when I read the book, I'm like, what is Tubab? And then I've been called Tubab here a few times already, but <laughs> now I've been called, um, Full of uh, Arab or you know or two Bob, so they mix it up now. Okay. But um, that kind of, that book kind of inspired me. And then I had coworkers. Uh, this one brother would always post that he's doing some fishing in Gambia. I'm like, what the heck? You going to the Gambia to do some fishing? And so he said, <laughs> he said, why not? You know. And I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't know that. So I ended up coming out here uh, on a visit, and he introduced me, you know, to his cousin, and then. Um, Cousin showed me around and, and stuff, so I said, I like this place. And then I said, mm. I watched I watched the Bag Family, I watched the Black mm -hmm. Sid, I watched mm -hmm. AC and Arkathy Them, you know. And in the beginning, 
it, you know, everything was like, wow, man, this is so amazing. So, okay, you know, okay. You know, spreading everybody a t-shirt, you know, stuff like that. And, you know. But it kind of solidified your choice, yes, I guess. Yes, okay, yes. okay. Wow. Yeah, I was watching everybody. Even the, the, you know, different channels, I watched everybody and then it kind of like opened it up. And actually, when I started my channel, I wasn't thinking about Africa. I was showing Long Beach. I was living in Southern mm -hmm, California, mm -hmm. San Diego, mm -hmm. different places. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to just film Long Beach for people who, um, who haven't been to Long Beach in a long time. So, yeah. But okay. can't be as special, you know, so, yeah. Okay. Well, also, too, um, I guess, one, because you are a practicing Muslim. Yes. Um, when you think about other countries that are, let, let's say, friendly to your um, religion as well, yeah. did that factor into the Gambia, or why didn't you, pit, even though you talk, you had the friend that you talked about, etc., yeah. why didn't some of those other places um, give you that feel as well? Gotcha. That's, that's a good question. Really mm -hmm. good question. You know, I spent uh, been to Saudi Arabia, been all the way to the Middle mm -hmm. Gulf, been I lived in Oman for five years, been to Dubai, been to Bahrain, all places. So I always feel a special uh, place when I go to a Muslim country. You know, okay. you know, I can just you, you see people praying on the street, nobody gonna sweat you, nobody right. gonna say anything. Right. So when I was, um, you know, um, Gambia is kind of like a hijra. It's not kind of it is a hijra. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of things that were going on in the states at that time. You know, George Floyd. A lot of things personally in my life, mm -hmm. and I said, you know what, I'm gonna make my move where I can before they lock everything down. And so mm -hmm. and that's what I did. I bought some land out here, and I was um, ready to um, yeah, uh, bought some land. Actually, I was gonna wait a few more years later, but things happen. I'm like, you know what, I'm coming <laughs> here. So you know, I made we call we call it a migration. Okay. We call it a hijra. So we come to a Muslim country so you can practice your faith without. Uh, any discrimination and any um, uh, in, in impediments impediments exactly okay you know, nobody sweating you and stuff so I feel very free out here I grow my beard out natural you know I can wear my kufis my dashikis you know I can just be be me you know mm -hmm. without anybody like why is he wearing that he think he's African you know what I'm saying <laughs> I am no, African I can... in, in, in America I'm an African American that's what I'm sure saying. sure yeah, but yeah well let me ask you this because you you, you recently were in Morocco yes as well as Sierra Leone, and Sierra yes. Leone has a, a, a large population of people who are practicing Islam as well. Yes. Um, and, and as you know, Morocco is predominantly a, uh, a Islamic state. Yes. Yes. So just when you compare like different places on the continent that you've gone, mm -hmm. this one just felt like home, I guess, Yeah, it's, well. like a, it's like something special okay. that came to me. And it's like, you know, actually the, the couple of days before, I, about a week or so before I actually came to the Gambia the second time. I was I left for like two and a half months and I came back for the first time. And I was like, man, I was praying and I mm -hmm. just was like in a, in a zone. I couldn't, it was like a prayer that only last three minutes, last 15 minutes. Oh, wow. You know, and it's like, and so it was like, uh, people say, it's, it's like my ancestors called, they prayed for me to come back. Okay. You know, you know that Islam was in West Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm pretty sure that my ancestors prayed. I got, I got four percent Mandinka here mm -hmm. in my DNA. Mm -hmm. I got Mende in Sierra Leone. I have uh, Ibo. I've been to Nigeria. I got cousins there that I mm -hmm. found through DNA. So initially, I was gonna go to try to stay in Nigeria, if possible. Mm. And I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. I, and I end up coming here because of the the, uh, the pandemic thing that's going on. They, right. They, they, they shut their consulate down in L.A. So, so you couldn't get your the visa out. Okay. Get it, yeah. So I ended up getting it last year after I've been living here in the Gambia for several months. And then all of a sudden I got it. I was like, oh, man, I got the visa. And my cousin wrote the letter, invitation letter. So I spent about six weeks in, in Nigeria. So okay. yeah, this is very peaceful, it's like tropical. And so this is a good base, this is a good place for you to come to the Gambia, it's a good place if you wanna to go to learn a little bit about Africa and before you go to another country, finally, or this can be your home base forever, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's a safe place, uh, you know, I think 98% very safe, 2% you got, you know, crime everywhere, but here it's like, you feel like, uh, you, I walk down the street in the middle of the night, the so only thing I gotta worry about those wild dogs running around. You're hilarious. <laughs> I was like, man, yeah. Well, let me ask you, because you were in Nigeria, and I believe you went to Abuja. I uh, went to, yes, I went to Abuja. Yep, I went and to Abuja three times there. <laughs> As well, and, I, and I'm sure you felt like the, because as well, Abuja is predominantly an Islamic area as well. Yeah. So, so you kind of felt that connection 
with there as well? I thought, or do you think if do you think if you were able to have gotten your visa like you had initially planned before all of this mess was going on, yes. that you would have made it that you have you would have gotten there and you would have said, okay, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. Or do you think it would have already been in your head like let me go to Gambia first? I think I'm what glad think? I went to the Gambia. I'm glad I went to the okay. Gambia to okay. see it and to experience it because I would have been in the back of my mind, man, I should have went to the Gambia. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, and that's yes, one thing. Yes. And I can say one thing is that it really it, when it, Nigeria wasn't really about the religion and about the people. It's about that uh, can be Christian. I got Christians uh, okay, and Muslims okay, in my family. Okay. My family's from the Way Belt as, as as well as Kano, Nigeria. Okay. And I do have a little family in um, Abuja as well, but I, I transferred. I see. You know, I see. Nigeria is like when I went through Nigeria, it was like I felt like I was home. You know what I'm saying? Because my face looks like yeah. Nigerian. Everything, yeah. you know, yeah. even yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 African Night Force was so sick. She uh, she said, "I'm gonna take you where your people at." When That's right. That's right. <laughs> she said, "You're gonna go to Unugu." You yeah. know, <laughs> you, you, you know, Hausa. I said, yeah. I didn't say I was Hausa. I didn't say you it. never said that. Never said it. But you know, when you go to where there in Kano, Nigeria, you know, I say I was up north, and, and but if, you know, but Islam is like it is special to me, but. On that plane coming from uh, Togo to, because uh, we went from, uh, I went from here to, they went through Sierra Leone, stopped there, okay. Okay. then they went through uh, Ghana, then they went through Togo, then it went to, I had changed planes in Togo, and then it went through uh, Abuja. Mm -hmm. And man, going through the mountains and seeing it, I just felt like at home, man. Okay. Something just like was amazing okay. about it. Okay. You know, it just, yeah. But you know, it's always good to have a deeper connection to a place when you are actually saying, okay, I'm going to make my final place a station in life. And you, you have a, 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 a spiritual connection or yeah. uh, something else that keeps you there, yeah. um, be it family. Yeah. Um, I think that helps you to solidify, you know, where you're going to be or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I have to ask you a question. This, this is going to be an interesting one. You have not made it to Ethiopia yet. Everyone I know, including myself, that yes. has made it to Ethiopia, yeah. um, I don't care what faith they practice, yeah. they have a spiritual awakening. Yes. Yes. And something in them, they basically are reignited for something, yes. for a purpose yeah. different than what they initially had prior to getting there. Yes. When are we gonna get to, get to Ethiopia? You know what, in 2010, tickets to Ethiopia, I had tickets to Egypt, I was living in Oman, and my mom got very sick. Okay. And uh, I, I was in I was in Umrah, I went to Umrah in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. Arabia, okay. And then I had to go home and she passed away shortly uh -huh. after she had cancer. She didn't ever tell anybody about it, she was very secretive about it, she didn't, know, she didn't want me to worry about her and stuff, and then, you know, so, and uh, I did have no ticket for that. I was the best man at the Ethiopia wedding. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my college friends, uh, he got married. I was the best man at the Ethiopian wedding. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a tremendous honor to be there. I love Ethiopian food and Jared, <laughs> Olawa, all that stuff. I, was I like, think you there. love, he's a foodie too. I'm a foodie too. Yes, he is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here he go. <laughs> Put a little energy. Cutting up. <laughs> but you know, I was feeling it. Uh, uh, so uh, she got me cracking up. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and then, because in Pico and Fairfax in LA, Ethiopia, in DC, Ethiopian food. When I wasn't living in Florida at the time, uh -huh. in, in um, Ethiopian, I always try Ethiopian food. I got, okay, I got, okay. I got some Ethiopian African horn in me too, so and in my DNA. And but I already know if I went to Ethiopia, I'd be in trouble there. You know, be here like we, here two wives or something. See, <laughs> see, they're gonna hate. Well, I just said, I already know. I would be like, man, oh man, I'll, I, you know. But that, what I said is a spiritual connection too. I was gonna go to right. Uh, that's what I, right. Hadera. I was going to Hadera. Mm -hmm. Hadera is where uh, my friend is from. That's the fourth holiest city in Islam. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, it is. And so that's why I was gonna go. I, I would definitely bypass Israel. I have no interest in going to the third holiest city, which is uh, Masjid Al Aska, the fourth holiest mosque. So you have, <laughs> you have Mecca, Medina. <laughs> And you have uh, Palestine, uh -huh. Oscar, and then you got the fourth one is in Hadera in Ethiopia. And they have this big wall around the whole city. It's an ancient city, and, and that's why I wanted to go and check out. And, and, and okay. God willing, I will go check it out. Okay, but, okay. So so it's on the list. It's on the list. It's on the big bucket list, for real. Because here, here recently, your travels have just been west. Yes. And so 
Um, again, as I said, I, I noticed that you had made the trek, and I'm just wondering because every every person I know, mm -hmm. every person, yeah, it, it's something about Ethiopia yeah. that opens them up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and and they love it afterwards. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. I went to Kenya and Tanzania several times. I was living out there for several months. Okay, and, okay, you know, okay. For uh, in the early 2000s, I was there. And so I picked up Swahili. I was I studied Swahili for two years in college, and then I actually went there, and I studied Arabic for two years, and uh, we actually lived in Oman. I've been mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, places. Mm -hmm. But I always, always something special about Ethiopia, and that's one thing. Even when I go through some people say I look a little Ethiopian sometimes mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, wow. So I do have the horn in me. I just have a take. I love the music with the uh, the shoulder dances. Let's, let's, you know what I'm saying? I get down. You know, like that. for those yeah. of you who don't know, he thinks that he can dance. I mean, I'm sure you've seen his videos in Nigeria where he yeah. was down doing the duck yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with his sister out there. I yeah. mean, he was trying to out duck her, and it was not working. <laughs> it wasn't. Working. It was not working. She was all still but, and, yes, and move, they, She wasn't yes, moving. Yes. And I'm all bouncing all around and stuff. She was like poised. She had her feet like this, like that. She, <laughs> like, she just moving her shoulders and stuff. I was like, I was all over the place. Yeah, I was trying. Listen, to listen. <laughs> when you added, I said, oh no. Stop, okay? The press <laughs> over here. But uh, okay, so what, what? What that is enlightening too. And then okay, you, you talked about missing out on Egypt as well as Ethiopia because yeah. of your mom. So, whenever you make the Ethiopian trek, do you think that you would include uh, Egypt in that as well, or are you going to do separate ones? Shout out to uh, my trail. Uh, on a mission in Luxor, Egypt. Shout out to my sister. That's right. She did an interview with the yesterday. Nubians. And uh, the Nubians, yeah, she's down in Luxor. Oh, yes. Um, I got 2% Egyptian in my in my DNA. Oh. So from uh, Ancestry DNA show, 2% Egyptian. As you can see, he's a very proud man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a proud <laughs> and very humble too, man. I'm thinking about being on the continent, if you're a diaspora, and you come in here, man, you, 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 you see a different world. And it's like a familiar world. But yes, it's strange, but I love every every day. It's like a, a, a something new here. But definitely Ethiopia and definitely Egypt, definitely. Well, some, I'm glad you, you said what you just said. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people who say, well, the statement that, that, that they make is that Africa is so bad primarily because everybody's trying to get out, they're trying to come over here, meaning the West. Yes. What is that about? You know, it's... What's your thoughts uh, about that? Uh, you know... I, I, I'm, I'm good with that. I agree with it because I understand the financial situation. Mm -hmm. But when you when they go there, don't lose what you got here. Don't lose what you learned here all your life. You mm -hmm. know, don't don't sell yourself out and, and, and be over there for 20, 30 years. And, and all you do is just grind and work and you don't save any money. And, 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 you, and you just be just like another diaspora in there. I said, build your stuff here while you're there. And then when you finish, you can stay five, 10 years, come back and have a great, good life. But just don't spend too much time there because it seems like it, 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 it swallow you up and then it can corrupt you too. A lot of things are corrupted. I know a lot of the African brothers from the system, mm -hmm. even sisters I talk to, when they move out there a lot, they do become corrupted. They mm -hmm. start doing crimes that they never do any that they never thought they would do. Some mm -hmm. go to prison, mm -hmm. some go to jail, some start using more stuff. Mm -hmm. If they use drugs here, they start using drugs, mm -hmm. they start doing all kind of corrupt stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not uh, what, 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 what glitters ain't always gold. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be cautious. But it, as I said, you know, I, I love America. I'm American. I'm an African American living in, abroad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my, my hatred isn't because I left America doesn't mean I hate America. No, it's not that. There were some of the things that were, I was going through with some people that I as a, as going, a black man. As a black man, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the, um, the um, systematic racism mm -hmm. and discrimination. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's terrible. And it makes you like, well, you have no other choice. So what are we gonna do? Chinese can go somewhere, they go back home. Koreans go somewhere, Cambodians, mm -hmm. Vietnamese, they go mm -hmm. back. What are we gonna do, okay? Yep. So now we got a place that we can call home. Basically DNA, uh -huh. DNA, you break uh -huh. the DNA, you know your tribes, mm -hmm. you know, you start learning languages. Mm -hmm. And so now people are afraid to go to Africa. Now people like the sister here, myself, other YouTubers and people like that trying to sh uh, change that narrative and they say, hey, you can come out here and you can have a good life, you know, if you do it right. But you know, for mm -hmm. the people who are going there from the from the continent, I understand why you want to go because sometimes it's hard for us to say why do you want to go back there. Well, you know what? You know, we come in over with some financial income. We come in; mm -hmm. they can want some of that too. Mm -hmm. They want some of that education. I have a master's degree, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I used to teach uh, university. I used to uh, mm -hmm. as a professor and stuff. So I understand what what they're trying to do. I understand it, but, you know. But but don't lose who you are, and and teach 
people like myself who are eager and want to learn about Africa, mm -hmm. teach us what about some things that you know. So they make our transfer over here easy. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. you, serious you, you, you're so silly. Well, you bring up a, a good point. Now, now he and I have some different views about this, okay? Yeah. And I, I, I do understand what you're saying in that, okay, well, they say, okay, well, THC is coming over here, and he got X, and he can do X, and blah, and blah, and blah, and his money from there comes a long way, blue, 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 blue. Mm -hmm. But let's look at patterns of things, okay. Okay? okay? You do not have a brain drain in the West, mm -hmm. meaning massive amounts, of, we're Americans, mm -hmm. massive amount of Americans are not moving abroad. Mm -hmm. to basically deplete the country mm -hmm. to go elsewhere and make it elsewhere. The number of mm -hmm. Americans that live abroad, it's not even 10%. Yes. However, when you are on the continent, you're a traveler, yeah. just like myself. Mm -hmm. When you look at these other countries on the continent, you have these vast amount of people who want to leave and cause what they term a brain drain. Yeah. So even if there's stuff going wrong from where they come from, yes. as a citizen or a person who loves their land, mm -hmm. they are the only ones that can make that right. Mm -hmm. I.e., we can't be coming here and saying, telling them what to do politically, etc. All mm -hmm. we can do if they, you know, ask us a question, try to teeter that line so we're not being divisive in, in that regard. Yes. But when it comes to them leaving, yeah. and, they, and the reasons that they give for leaving, et cetera, et cetera, they got to fix the stuff here. That's true. And leaving not gonna solve that. That's true. So I get what you're saying, I get what you're saying. Yeah. but the mass amounts of ones that have left, and like you said, they're staying 20 and 30 years. Yeah. And when you ask them what they've been doing back here, mm -hmm. and all of this stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know someone, back in a certain country, I'm not gonna say which country it is. Uh, she is of Nigerian descent, mother and father Nigerian. And when, in times we've had conversation, or I've seen her choice of dating options, let me say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. It's always some negative rhetoric about a Nigerian man. Oh, yes. now, now, now here's my, yeah. I grew up in dysfunction, okay, with mother and father, but I am not going to penalize all black American men for the ills of my dad. Mm. I'm not. Mm. I've tried to implore that to her as well. Whatever your dad did, okay. We're humans. We're flawed. But to say that you don't trust any Nigerian man because of your father. Yeah. So now all of the Nigerian men are just bad. Mm. Because of one fool. Yep. Yeah. You're wrong for that. You you dead wrong. So it so even simple stuff like that. So just in terms of ideology, I get what you're saying, but we have got to we can't get progress if people are doing just that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not saying people should not be happy financially or be in a better place financially. Uh, you know, I'm all about collectivism, and the only way to me that and, and maybe I, I, I'm idealistic in, in that. Is to, is to think that at some juncture in life, maybe I'll be 70 and we all are gonna be harmonious and it's gonna be better at some at some some mm -hmm. point. Because right now we we have such division going on with all these YouTubers, mm -hmm. uh, with these people that you all follow on Twitter, that th th this harsh rhetoric. And Don, John Henry, we have no friends. We are each other's friends, but you all do a bunch of mess. So even though my brother and I don't have the same agreement, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit here and lamb blast him about, about because he has his reasons for that, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's something, it, I think it's something to be considered. I don't want, people coming in Africa and ask me all the time, TAC, Elizabeth, can you help me get to, get to Dubai? Mm -hmm. And guess what my answer is? Mm -hmm. Hell no. Okay, gotcha. Can you help me get to America? <laughs> Hell no. Exactly. Not no now. No. Exactly. exactly. Uh, one, I take my name serious. Yes. Yeah. I, I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I want you to be at home. Exactly. 
I got a video called Keep Your Ass at Home. <laughs> to keep your ass at home. I, I mean that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to your home. Yeah. Meet me at home. But you do, she do not make a point. <laughs> Go you know, ahead, brother. She doesn't make a point because uh, even on my videos, too, I mentioned that uh, uh, issue, I mean, people used to, all around the world used to come to Africa for knowledge, education, mm -hmm. to learn from Africans and learn. They, they was like the footsteps begging for for knowledge. Yes. And now it's reversed. It's reversed. Yeah, it shouldn't be that way. And people shouldn't, like I said, I was saying, I understand why they trying to leave, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they shouldn't have to leave. It, they should have the infrastructure and the education and the jobs and everything should be here. And um, and that's the reason why that's, it comes up to the diaspora to help part participate, to, to assist in that as well. Mm -hmm. Because I mentioned I had a live yesterday about what are the Lebanese, right. Chinese, and right. these, you know, and African Americans, the diasporas, uh, who's benefiting the, the, the Africa, you know, who's benefiting them, you know, and so um, we are people who are indigenous, I mean, really from Africa, mm -hmm. and we should be showing more of, uh, you know, production and businesses and, and, and helping with this uh, bridging that gap, Pan Africanism. You know, and that's what I see. I, I see that we quit, uh, get some education, schools, mm -hmm. you know, hospitals, whatever. Mm -hmm. Got engineers. He got mm -hmm. all kind of smart, yeah. intelligent yes. people, you know, and it's not being, you know, yeah. yeah I, I agree. With we don't value system. one. Yeah, yeah. It's like the value of one another yes. uh, is 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 consistently being diminished because the other man's ice is colder. No, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I, again, you know, I pre, pre, pre I preach page people being patriots because a lot of that a lot of that comes from the lack of patriotism yeah. a lot of that comes from that and you being a military person you understand exactly what I'm talking about yeah, yeah. you understand exa exactly the indoctrination of that yeah. and so if think about how you just were speaking about you know Nigeria and just being here in the Gambia mm -hmm. um, and this is not your birth land per se I mean okay you have roots to here yes yeah. your, your branches go all over the place but the way that you were speaking, it's mm -hmm. like a patriot. Yeah. But you weren't born here. I wasn't born here. So, just so, so, yeah. so understand, that, so yeah. yes, yeah. that's my caveat. I feel the attraction here, it's the attraction here. And when you come to Africa once, most, most people I know, they always come back again. It's like, we always want to come back again. And like I said, I've been here, here 15 years ago, I did mm -hmm. three or four years at a time, different times. And then I ended up uh, uh, you know, making that move finally. And so everybody can do it. It's like you gotta. I say, spiritual number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Then the other finances, uh, as far as your financial situation mm -hmm. and stuff. Worry about the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, but but take it. I mean, make sure that it happens. But you have to have a spiritual. Mm -hmm. Once you have a spiritual connection with the continent and stuff, all the other stuff will come. Okay. You know, you just gotta be prepared for it. Prepare yourself for it. Right. You know, I'm not trying to tell people to get one-way tickets and all that, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. You know, Thank it's you. like, you got to be smart. I don't want you to tell people to be ready. I appreciate that, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> Look, I saying? appreciate that, brother. You, you, got, you know what I'm saying? That's you what got, I'm talking about yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why are you doing that stuff, man? It, it's just, oh, I got a one-way ticket, and all of a sudden, you be like, tapping out. Six months later, you're going back. You know, I had to get another one-way ticket, huh? Ooh, uh, good, 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 facts. You know, you know so... I don't want to see that. So I do offer consultations as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. I got king to king consultations. Mm -hmm. The brothers contact me um, when we talk about man issues. You know, I'll be a man in Africa. I got a Gambian uh, wife here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and um, and um, it's different. You know how how the, the whole climate is different from the diaspora to when you come to the continent. Your position and role yep. is different. Well, mar different marriage system. in itself though marriage, is different. It's different. Marriage yes. is different. It's a different type of. Respect, and I'm not, you know, and and we need to learn a lot. We need to relearn and reclaim what we lost, you know. And I'm not talking mm -hmm. about being a chauvinist and all that. It's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. a, how you mm -hmm. know how the, the home is is arranged and how the respect for each other is. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mutual respect. It's, it's it's similar, but there's a lot of things that we we haven't learned. And I also have, uh, do general consultations as well. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. want to repatriate to mm -hmm. the continent. Uh, what the pros and cons. What to look out mm -hmm. for. Advice can mm -hmm. give you. You know, I spent about 12 years of my life overseas, mm -hmm. living abroad. So mm -hmm. I'm not a stranger to living abroad, mm -hmm. overseas. You know, some people that say first plane ticket, first pa they may be having a passport, and then they come to the Gambia, they come to places. What do they have? What do they have? Who's gonna show them and guide them and tell them, hey, you know, watch out for this and do this, this. Nobody's doing it. Yeah. Everybody's on their own. 
Yeah. And so that's why I really want to be there to help you. And I, I've been getting a lot of consultations. Thank you so much yeah. for that. You know what I'm saying? I got actually, I, I got Gambians who are employed who helped me with the research as well. So when you uh, 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 make a payment, whatever, that some of that money is going to them. You know as well and so that's they, awesome they, you know what i'm saying it's just not me you know it ain't all about me 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 yeah because he doesn't know anything y'all didn't, didn't know you didn't know <laughs> ain't nothing but chicken wing on the strain so hmm. what i say is right now is that they get you know i came over here for a reason and i have employed the gambians mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and I, if anything i can think about that can help another gambian get something going on i will help them, you know and, and that's awesome thing, that's awesome you know what i'm saying well, I want to thank you for joining me today here on the channel and imparting some of this good knowledge and letting people know that if they do have a spiritual connection, they can find some peace here on the continent. Yes. So, Mr. THC, Nizabitty, and we out. What are we talking about?